Jacob Wade here from iHeart Budgets, and I am so excited to have you here to get started on your budget. Today, I'm going to walk you through my budget template that I created on Google Sheets. You should have an email from me if you signed up, and just click on the download Google Sheets template, and it'll open up. Uh, if you are a paper and pencil person, I have a printable PDF there. You can print that out and follow along as well. This walkthrough is going to take us through that Google Sheets version. So when you click on that link, it should take you to a page that looks something like this. What you're going to want to do is make a copy of that template. So just click on make a copy and it should automatically open up. For some reason, you're not signed into your Google account. It'll ask you to you know, sign into your Gmail or your Google account. Uh, but then you can make a copy and create your own version here. Uh, and same thing on your mobile phone. It will open up the Google Sheets application. Uh, if you don't have that, it'll open up in a browser. You can you can install that app. Uh, I highly recommend it if you want to do everything on the go from your phone. So once the thing is opened, you can go in and rename it. So right now it just says, you know, copy of IHB monthly budget. So I'm just going to delete that here and just call it Jacob monthly budget and uh, I always recommend just like put the date in, so October 2019, right? So now I've renamed it, now it's saved to my Google account, uh, and I'm good to go. So uh, there are a few sections in here. First, I'm gonna talk about the two tabs. So the first tab is where you're gonna see the actual monthly budget. And then the second tab is the day-to-day -day transactions that you're going to enter. So we're gonna first start going through the monthly budget tab. So at the very top, I put the monthly savings. This is going to take all of your income minus your expenses and see what's left over. Uh, we've got the planned section, which is how we start by creating the budget, and then the actual section, which is based on your actual spending that you record throughout the month. The goal here is obviously to have a positive number and save as much money as possible toward your goals. So let's go through. I created four sections in this budget uh, for, for a reason. So we're gonna go through and start with section number one. So of course, the very top of your budget needs to be your income. So without your income, you can't pay any expenses. So let's start there. Uh, I always say start with your starting balance. This is really important. I don't want you to start the beginning of next month. I want you to start today. So I put this starting balance section here um, and so you can go in and say, okay, what is my starting balance today, right? So for this example budget, the starting balance is $1,000. And then you go through and say, okay, how am I going to get paid this month? There's maybe there's four paychecks, there's side hustle income, I'm going to go do some babysitting, or I'm going to, you know, earn some interest. Anything that is going to hit your bank account is income, please put it here because we want to make sure that all of that is available for your monthly budget. So once you have all that in, so I just put in some examples here. Um, you can change the name of these as well, right? So maybe this is side hustle income, $150 planned for the month. So that's your income section. The spending section, this is where you put your discretionary spending. So this is the things like groceries, eating out, entertainment, um, you know, spending cash for the month. I need to go to Target or Amazon or any of those things. This is your discretionary spending. You're going to want to put that here. Now, I want to make an important note. This is where you have the most control of your budget because your day-to-day -day transactions typically end up in one of these categories. Uh, and this is where you can start making really good decisions with your money. So I do recommend when you first enter these numbers, let's base it on reality, right? So if you typically spend $1,000 a month on groceries, put $1,000 in your budget. This is your first time around. We want to see where you end up first. So I just put in a bunch of realistic numbers for this example budget. This person spends $1,000 a month on groceries, 500 bucks a month on gas, um, you know, and so on and so forth down the line. This is based on their actual spending, not wishful thinking of where I think the budget should go. We'll get to that later. I want to be real here because if you don't create a budget based in reality, then it is going to fail 100% of the time. So let's start with um, what you actually spend here. And then again, you can change the category names, add or delete, or you know, change whatever you want here. And then your bills. So the bills section is your monthly recurring expenses. Typically, these happen at the same time every month. They're almost the same amount every month. Um, things like utilities can fluctuate, right? But you kind of have an average of, okay, these are all of my bills. So I want to put those all here. Here's something really key. 
I want you to put in when that bill transaction is due, right? So if you put your due date on the bills in here, then you can put them in order. So I would, you know, mortgage, rent, electric, car payment, all those are going through on the first here, for example. And then we go to the eighth, we've got uh, the natural gas bill, and then we've got the water and sewer and the garbage and so on and so forth. This is important because you're going to be budgeting based on when you get paid, right? So if you're still living paycheck to paycheck or working your way out of debt and, and you're not a month ahead on your bills or, um, you know, you depend on that paycheck to pay the next two weeks of bills, for example, let's make sure you put them on paper in order so you know, okay, I've got about this much in bills due um, the first half of the month and this much in bills due on the second half of the month. This helps you plan your month out. Right. If you need to, maybe you can call some of these. Say, hey, there's a lot more money going out on the first half of the month. Maybe these bills will, you know, I can call them and move the billing date a little later, just so it's more balanced. Right. While you're kind of getting on your feet. So, put your bills in here. Put the due date and put them in order, um, and then try to put an average, accurate number for what that is. And then the last section uh, is the buckets section. This is where you have I call them savings buckets. Those buckets are buckets of money that you slowly strategically put money away into so that when when that expense comes up the money's already there these are infrequent expenses these are not month to month expenses right so things like christmas something you can save toward things like <clears throat> um like for us clothing isn't a monthly expense so we save up for that uh birthdays or anniversaries or events or vacations or and then things like car maintenance or you know maybe you're saving for a college fund or you're saving for a car replacement or a new computer all of those things can fit into these buckets because they're infrequent expenses and you can plan for them, right? So make sure that you fill in some of these so you get in the habit of starting to save toward those things. So those are the four sections of the budget. And, you know, at this point, you, I've put in a bunch of examples here, but I want you to put in your own numbers based on your actual spending, right? Go back a couple of months, look at your bank statements. Okay, where are we actually spending money? Categorize this stuff and say, okay, here's a realistic budget and then go back to the top and see where you are. Some of you might find, I'm saving 500 bucks a month if I can stick to this budget. Awesome, maybe I can save more, where can I tweak? Some of you might be like this person where they're overstretched. They are planning based on their real numbers, they typically overspend every month, which means they're going further and further into debt. So. This is where we can put this budget planning to use. So we're gonna go down <clears throat> and I always, I always go to the spending categories, the discretionary spending, because that's typically where you have the most control. So maybe you do spend $1,000 a month on groceries, but you're gonna buy in bulk. You're gonna get some coupons and you're gonna do a little bit of simple meal planning. Maybe you'll sign up for emails and they'll do the meal planning for you and you can find a way to shave off $150 from that budget. So. You're gonna go in here to your planned expenses and change that. So now you have $150 off of that budget and then maybe um, you aren't gonna drive as much as you thought or you can find ways to save money on gas. You're gonna knock $100 off of there, right? So this is 400 instead of 500. And though you love eating out, you realize you are overstretched. So instead of spending $200, you're gonna spend $100 on you know, a nice family meal out only one time that month. You're gonna meal plan, you're gonna, you know, bring your lunches to work. You're gonna not go out to eat as much because you know that you're overstretched. Same with entertainment. You've got Netflix, you can watch movies at home. Um, you're not gonna go to the ball game. You're gonna cancel, you know, whatever it is to get yourself back ahead. You're gonna cut your entertainment down. You go to Groupon, find a really good coupon and take your family to the movies once, 50 bucks, right? And then, um, let's say you're spending cash stays, but maybe, um, I don't know. So there, there's a, there's a couple of ways that you could have saved money. You can also go down to your, your bills and look at ways to save money there. Those are a little tougher. Uh, I do have some strategies around that. Um, and if you look at my post on 18 plus ways to save money, I go into great detail about how to save money on this and other expenses. Um, but let's just see where we're at with those specific cuts. So if we scroll back up to the top, look at that. We went from being negative every month to making a few adjustments, and now we can save $100 a month. That's life-changing, especially if you're somebody that's going into debt every month. So 
you can see the power of, of filling in this budget and then starting to make plans. Okay, where can we adjust? Can we tweak here? Can we tweak there, right? And then you can continue to optimize that over the months, um, but let's just start there. So now you're in a good place. So now let's talk about using the budget day to day. You noticed I have other sections here, the actual budget, which is gonna be pulling data directly from your transactions. And I put a section here that says the difference. You know, you planned on spending 850 bucks a month on groceries, you know, what's left over. Um, you know, it just shows the difference between your planned and your actual. So let's go over to the transactions and talk about that. So first things first, your current balance is gonna be at the top. I wanted this to be reality. Where are you at today? You know, um, whether you're swiping the credit card, using a debit card, writing a check, using cash, this is gonna be the current balance of your accounts so that you don't overdo yourself, right? So if you go in, let's just take some of these out. Um, your starting balance was $1,000, and I'll take some of these, uh, these fake transactions out. So you've got $1,000 starting balance. Boom, there's your current balance. So we're going to enter a few expenses, right? So you're going to put your date in, 10 5 it's today, and you spent $307, $307 on groceries um, at Costco, right? And let's say you also went to Trader Joe's and spent money on groceries. Um, and as you can see, as I start to type, it sort of auto fills in groceries here. This is actually pulling, if you hit the drop down. This is pulling categories that you created on your front page. Okay, so look at that. So you went to TJ's and spent another hundred dollars. So this is you sit down in your car, you pull out your phone. I'm going to pop in those transactions. So now, if you go back over to your monthly budget, there's your spending. You planned 850 for the month. You're already out 400 bucks. That was a big shopping day. And here's what's left, right? So that's a huge deal. You can put your transactions in, come back and see exactly where you're at. The other key thing is you started with a thousand bucks. You haven't got paid yet. Here's what you got left over. So you cannot overspend this number because you haven't gotten the money, right? So let's try not to spend the rest of that money. So say you actually do get paid, um, got paid on the first and it was your paycheck number one. Um, so you've got a little bit more money in there, right? So you can see the current balance changes based on income or your expenses. So it should be pretty straightforward. You go in, you put your date, your amount, your category so that it pulls everything over and then where, you know, whatever you want to put in the notes section. Uh, and then your monthly budget is accurate. So the, the way that I recommend using this is you're about to go spend money on something. The question should always pop in your head. Is it in the budget? Right. Well, pull it out. You've got Google Sheets on your phone. You pull it out. You look. What do I have left in this budget? Right. Your leftover number is right there. It is current it is accurate as long as you've been putting your transactions in. And the great thing is, is you can also share this with your spouse, right? So you can hit the share button, go over, put their Gmail address in. It's gotta be a Google account, but you put in their Gmail address, hit share, and now they have a copy of it as well. So you can stay in sync, right? This is what my, my wife and I are um, always, always, always thankful for is that our budgets are in sync so that we always know where the money is, how much is left, and those questions are always answered, and it's never a guess. So that's how I recommend you use this budget day to day. Now it's your turn to get in here, put in your expenses, maybe have that family meeting and say, okay, where is my money going? Let's let's figure it out. Let's put it on paper, and then let's use this thing every single day to make sure that we stay on track. Um, I am going to recommend a couple of quick tips here. One is to expect failure. I always say it takes three months to get on a budget. You start budgeting, you're not gonna know exactly how to navigate this, life is gonna happen, something's gonna come up, you won't anticipate it, you will blow the budget. And you're gonna do that for three months, just kind of getting your bearings, but you are building amazing money habits and good decision making as you enter these transactions, as you consider, do we have that in the budget? And you start to make better money decisions. So do not give up, give it that 90 days. The second thing is, Set up a weekly check-in. I always recommend Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. How are we doing? How are things going? Are we staying on track? Did we miss any transactions? Let's, let's keep up to date on this. 
are we going to be able to make it through the rest of the month? You know, have those weekly check-ins. Uh, eventually, it, it, it won't be as big a deal. But for those first three months, just stay on top of it. Weekly check-ins, uh, multiple times a week if you have to. Just make sure you're staying in sync because, you're again, you're building better money habits. Uh, and the third thing is, is write down your why. Why are you doing this? There's a reason you're here looking at a budget template, watching a video of me show you how to use this thing. It's because you want to get better with your money. You want to get out of debt. You want to stop living paycheck to paycheck. You want to know where all your money's going. You want to actually put money into savings and, and watch it grow, right? There, there's big whys there. But behind those goals, the why is even bigger. For me, I got engaged and I realized I wanted to to build an awesome life with my wife. And then now I have kids with my family. So I always have a picture of my family on the background of my computer and my phone. And it always reminds me why I'm doing what I'm doing. And especially when I'm managing my money, I need to make sure all of those decisions are based on that. So find your why. You know, I want to retire someday. I want to stop living in debt and paying other people interest. I want to grow my savings so that I have security. I want to stop stressing out. Whatever that why is, write it down and remind yourself of that every single day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this helped a lot. If you need anything, please reach out to me. The website's iheartbudgets.net or shoot me an email, jacob at iheartbudgets.net. I am so happy you are here um, and let's get started today.